you doing, man? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. How are you? Yeah, doing very well too. Um, welcome to Nightbreed, James. Um, thanks for coming on, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate cool. it. Um, so, uh, 2014, what, uh, what started Hell Ripper? Uh, basically, it was actually a couple of years earlier I had the idea. Um, basically, I just... I didn't know many people in my scene, so I didn't know many people that were interested in the same kind of music as me. You know, the black thrash, kind of metal punk stuff. Mm. Um, and I thought, I'm going to try and do things on my own instead of waiting for other people to get involved. Um, yeah, I thought if I kept waiting for the right people to get involved, then I was just going to, it was never going to happen. So I thought, let's just go for it try and do it inspired by you know bands like toxic holocaust or midnight dark throne you know bands that were diy and did things primarily on their own as a one or two uh one or two people um yeah i thought yeah let's do it and the plan like i say i recorded something in like 2012 or 13 or something and i didn't like it i didn't like how it turned out the recording wasn't the best the songs weren't the best so yeah, I deleted that, kind of put it on hold for a little while, came back to it in 2014. And then I wrote the first EP, which, yeah, was released the start of 2015. And that was really the extent of what I thought was going to happen. And uh, here we are, eight, nine years later from from when I had had the, the real idea for Hellripper 2014, and things really got started and yeah nine years later here we are like um doing a third album and doing tours and stuff it's yeah <laughs> that's cool man. um so what was the process early on like uh so you must be playing guitars and bass and stuff are you programming drums or you got a drum kit yeah like that? yeah yeah so uh yeah basically yeah like that especially in the early days i thought um let's like i say i couldn't play drums but i was like who cares? Um, let's just try, huh. try see what happens, man. Like, uh, if you've got the the tools there, I mean, now we're, I mean, that's that's what I mean. We're 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 lucky to have like the equipment, the technology to to do this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna use it uh, <laughs> to do yeah. to get things going. And yeah, guitar and bass is my main in, uh, uh, instruments. I do play drums, just not very well. Um, but yeah, guitar has like always been my the instrument that I, I I've gravitated towards and it's the thing that I play every day and oh. it's how I write all my music, all the riffs on guitar and yeah, just like that. And yeah, so I write the kind of demos on as like a MIDI format on Tux Guitar, Guitar Pro type software. Uh-huh. Um, so like the demo is kind of there. It's kinda of, I have like a full MIDI sounding working version of the track um which acts as a demo i can change the structure change parts around and all that kind of things um and yeah then i go and record it put the drums drums guitar bass then vocals last and that always takes the longest because it's that takes a lot out of me doing the vocals you know it's like a physical thing (laughs) um and if you're ill or whatever, you're you've got to delay things because you sound horrible and <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, so whereabouts in Scotland are you? So I'm from Aberdeen, but currently I live uh, up in the Highlands in Fort William, which uh is part of the reason this new album uh I decided to kind of center it around Scotland. Um but my environment usually doesn't kind of play a part in how I write songs or or influence me or any in it in any way but huh. I moved to the Highlands a couple of years ago and yeah it kind of led me to look into you know Scottish history folklore kind of the darker side of things you know like the devil the devil in Scotland and all that kind of stuff and the more evil side of things uh and yeah that kind of made me think yeah let's do a whole thing about um Scottish, I uh, uh, center the album around Scotland, and though the songs aren't connected by a story, they're, you know, they're still connected by the theme, which I think kind of gives a little bit of cohesion overall to the album. And yeah, 
it was something different. I've never really had an, an album themed on one thing. Oh. And yeah, this in the Scottish aspect as well, of course, is something different for me to write about as well. The I've had a few a couple of songs based on Scottish stuff before, but not to this extent. And yeah, it was it was fun. And yeah, again, it's quite different in the realms of black thrash, black speed. Oh. Um I don't I don't think there's many bands talking about this kind of stuff. So oh. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Actually, talking Black Thrush, Black Speed, what sort of originally, you know, got you into that sort of music? Like, I love it as well, but, you know, what, what yeah. was the first kind of spark that went made you go, oh, yeah, this is it, you know? Yeah, it was strange because I was always into, um, like, I got into thrash first. So I was into, like, bands, like, all these more, I guess, technical bands. So I was, like, really into, you know, Metallica, Megadeth, Annihilator, Artillery, uh, Toxic, um stuff like that so i was always kind of into like thrash with like loads of guitar solos loads of extreme riffs the songs were all like uh seven minutes long and stuff and i got into like yeah we got into like death metal and and all that and then at some point yeah i just i think i, I heard like um maybe like one of the one of the punk dark throne albums or something one of those and i kind of really liked that and i got into toxic holocaust and bands like venom um where it's kind of it's kind of thrash but on the uh, less complex like less technically complex and stuff like that so i was never a i was never a lead guitar player like i've always just kind of focused on rhythm i've had friends that were like i i would jam with friends who were much better at lead guitar than me and so I thought, okay, I'll leave them to do the lead stuff. I'll focus on the rhythm. Oh. Um, and I never thought I would need to like play a guitar solo or anything because there were other people that could do that. So, yeah, I, that was kind of one thing that put me off as well. I was like, to do a thrash band, you need to have loads of solos. You need to be the best guitar player. But yeah, after hearing bands, you know, like that were more influenced by the the punk side of things and like the metal punk scene, rock, like black and roll. So yeah, Toxic Holocaust, Dark Throne, Midnight, um, Chapel, um, uh, Sabbath, I guess, though they are uh, maybe a bit more complex. The Japanese Sabbath, I mean, uh, they're a bit more uh, technically complex, maybe compared to these bands. But yeah, it was like, I was like, you can do thrash and stuff without extreme guitar solos without the need to be the best guitar player and things so that kind of inspired me to to do things that way and uh, I think over the years I've gotten better at guitar probably improved my abilities and now I'm at a stage where I can kind of merge the two together you know like your Megadeths and Annihilator with like your Toxic Holocaust and stuff so more technical guitar solos and maybe more complex song structures and Stuff like that. But yeah, I love it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's common. Cool. <laughs> um, so 2015, you put out a split with uh, Bat Shiva from Philadelphia. Um, mm. How'd you get together with Bat Shiva? Uh, I think we just messaged each other on like Twitter or Facebook or something. Same way, that, or email maybe. Same way all the splits happened. Um, same with the one with like a uh, fetid zombie, I think. Either I can't remember it was either me or Mark reached out to each other saying, "Oh, I like what you do. Do you want to do a split?" It's basically how all the splits have worked. Uh, with Barbatos, uh, a couple of years later, I just messaged them. Um, do you want to do a split? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's basically how it's worked for all the splits so far. Usually, just one of the bands get in touch with each other, yeah. um, and then write a couple of songs, or if you've got songs ready. Um, but I like to kind of try and be influenced by like the other bands you know like oh, yeah that's for cool. for those uh couple songs like i try and say okay let's write a song maybe influenced by these other bands but uh yeah it's not really it, it's just a kind of simple process like just hi do you want to do a split yeah. <laughs> um yeah well that's cool um so 2017 uh coagulating darkness are your parents are on guest vocals? <laughs> I gotta say, my yeah. parents are not supportive of my metal at all. Uh, but that's great that yours are, man. Like that sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, they were. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what I can't remember what song it is. It might be Conduit Closing or maybe maybe uh, Everlasting Hellfire. I can't remember, but yeah, they were. I needed some gang vocals for a part, and yeah, cool. 
uh, since everything's recorded at home, I think they were like downstairs or something. I was like, hey, do you want to shout into a microphone? And yeah, yeah they were happy to do so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Right. There. Uh, um, <laughs> so are mum and dad into metal at all? Like- uh, not really, uh, but yeah, they've, they're really supportive of what I do. And uh, my dad's into kind of uh, rock and stuff. Like he likes ACDC and oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, like bands like the Eagles, Beatles, Dire Straits, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, my mom's more into the like kind of, I think, pop music and stuff. But she's, uh, yeah, she she like went to all my shows in Aberdeen and she oh. took, me to, took me to shows like when I was like too young to go to other cities and stuff on my own so she came yeah. to see like Canada corpse with me um so yeah they're very supportive in uh in that way that's really cool man. um so you've had heaps of praise like metal hammer vice that kind of thing how like are you sending stuff everywhere or have they come across it like how does that work it's pretty awesome um, right? i think it's a mixture um yeah. yeah i think again it's just kind of yeah i just would send things out everywhere and then sometimes word of mouth that's been the biggest um promotion for hell ripper just word of mouth like the the hell ripper goat cult um is a very like a supportive kind of community like they share the music everywhere it's 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 really cool like it's a little kind of yeah like a community type thing so it's like word of mouth like telling each other's friends sharing stuff on a on forums or reddit or facebook or instagram whatever and uh yeah loads of people just come across it that way just via word of mouth or via a post on facebook and yeah and yeah i especially in the early days i sent out the album the the music to it like to as much places i as i could send it out to and oh. yeah trying to get like a little press kit together and all that and um like with my limited knowledge just trying to do what i thought would work um <laughs> yeah Oh, that's cool, man. Um, so 2018, you were part of the worldwide organization of um, Metalheads Against Nazis 2 compilation. Um, that's cool. How'd you get to be a part of that one? Again, it was just asked. I uh, can't nice. remember how, either Twitter or email or something. They're like, uh, do you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, it's uh, something I'm, it's quite a simple message um, mm-hmm. against Nazis, against all that type of shit. So, yeah, I was happy to kind of, uh, you know, especially in a scene where uh, this kind of views are so prevalent, it's good to have your, you know, just your message out there. Like, I am against any form of fascism or racism, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so good just to do that without, because, I mean, Hell Ripper, like, we don't, it's not a, the lyrically, it's not a political band and yeah. all that kind of thing. So it's just kind of good to, have it out there that uh, I try not to be a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> um, twenty twenty, the affair of the poisons. It's out on uh, Peaceville. You're in pretty good company there, man. Like, how did um how did that one work out? Did they reach out to you or something? Yeah, I think. Yeah, um, yeah I think uh, the label manager Paul. I think he was uh, recommended the band by a friend of his, and we were. It was. I think he got in touch right after we released Black Arts and Alchemy, the EP, and we were on tour um in europe and the uk and i think we were stuck in traffic in london we were i think we were going to support midnight um which one of my favorite bands and yeah we were were like stuck in this traffic just outside london for like for ages like four four hours or something we were like just not moving i just checked my phone it was like email from peaceville records and i was like oh this is cool and i was like oh showed the guys i was like look the guy like an act like a a bigger labels like interested in someone like peaceville with yeah i mean dark throne i mentioned yeah. and yeah. they've had all sorts of ba- uh, autopsy dark throne opeth um dodheim's guard um whoever else uh catatonia all this kind of stuff so yeah. um bloodbath um a lot of my first kind of extreme metal uh releases like i bought like our peaceful stuff like bloodbath um i think the, it was like what the first or second death metal album i bought uh the uh, this fathom fathomless mastery um back when it was kind of relatively new out when i was first discovering extreme metal 
And of course, Dark Throne kind of got me into this kind of music. And yeah, it was just really cool. And then it was kind of simple, just kind of spoke to them and seen what they kind of thought, like what they wanted to do. And our visions kind of aligned. And yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. kind of kind of an easy process. Um more like easier than like you would think uh just to to do that yeah awesome man. um so lord rot one of your other projects like a horror death metal thing is that mm. still is there going to be more lord rot or is that kind of I'm, you know? I'm not too sure originally the plan was to keep doing it um kind of release maybe splits and eps um oh. and i've got and i had quite a few songs kind of almost ready for another ep but i've been kind of trying not to spread myself like uh too thin and i thought and a lot of this lord rot stuff has kind of ended up in the new hell ripper album okay in some way so i'm not too sure what's happening with lord rot i think it's probably still there if i write something you know more like fully death metal that won't really work with hell ripper or something but a lot of the stuff i can kind of incorporate into hell ripper and make it more you know combine it with other influences combine it with black metal thrash and Mm. maybe yeah make it a bit more uh uh like just merge uh merge the two things more to get something a bit different but uh yeah i mean it's still it still exists um it's just i'm not i'm not too sure what state it's in and whether i mean it still exists but i'm not sure if it does still exist <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah sure yeah see what we'll happens. see what happens we'll see what happens yeah, see what happens, uh, yeah. it's possible nah. that's cool um so yeah you obviously you started with the solo recordings and now you got you know a band you've had live lineups um are these all like guys that you knew already or how'd you come across other musos to play with yeah so um we've had quite a few like different people over the years but the last this band right now has been has been together since almost four years now i think mm. and yeah it was uh so clarky on bass he's um uh, a friend from like the music scene i've played in bands with him before when i lived in aberdeen um, so I've known him for almost 10 years or something now um, Joseph on guitar he was actually in like a local indie band in Aberdeen um, I didn't I didn't know him I knew of his band but I didn't know him and um, he bought a patch from me one day or something on Bandcamp and I, I realised he liked Met, uh, Metallica and Motorhead and when I needed a new guitar player, I thought, okay, this guy's local. He knows Metallica and Motorhead. I mean, surely that's good enough. If he can play that kind of stuff, yeah. surely that's uh, good enough for Hell Ripper. So he got involved and he's been, I think he's been here for like five years now. And yeah, the drummer Max, he's actually based down in Brighton, which is like 12, 15 hours away from me. Like oh. the bottom of the UK, I'm up at, near the top. Yeah. I, I literally, I just put out a tweet saying I need a new drummer. And he messaged me like within a day or two or something like that saying yeah i'm up for it um and then sent me a couple of videos like drum covers um and yeah that was it i think like six months later we were uh playing like we were on tour in europe like i say the black art ep just was released i think so yeah about four years four just over four years i think we've probably been playing together as this version of the live band and hmm. Yeah, hopefully it continues like that. Like they're really good guys, really good at playing at their instruments and Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool, man. Um so Feb seventeen, the new one, uh Warlock Scrim and Withered Hags is out. Um, has the writing changed since you've kind of taken it to the stage? Like are the other guys involved at all or are you sort of thinking uh, differently? Like not so much. Um, though I do get their input. Like when I write parts and stuff, I say cool. like, Do you think this works? and um, like say I have two versions of something or if I've got something I'm not too sure of, I'll say, what do you think's better here and here? Um, and they give me their opinion and mixes and stuff. And um, yeah, so I get their input that way. But yeah, the writing is still just me. It's basically the same as it's always been, just kind of me in this room here, just uh, playing guitar, coming up with riffs and going from there really. Um yeah, I think this time, like I, like I mentioned, like I'm trying to incorporate a bit more stuff from out with the black speed thrash kind of style, like with the death metal, Lord Rot, and uh, even 
bands from out with metal, you know, the Beatles or Manic Street Preachers or Alice in Chains, Oasis, anything really try to incorporate that in some sort of metal way. Try not to dilute the sound. I'm very that's important not to like dilute the sound, but oh. it's a cool challenge to try and incorporate these other things that are not um found in this style of music, even production ideas or structural song structure ideas and stuff like that. And so yeah, that's the probably the biggest thing that I've tried to expand the sound this time around. That's cool. I'm talking about other, you know, other styles and stuff. What have you been listening to lately? What kind of, you know, recently well, dance, you know? Uh what I've been listening to, I've been listening to a lot of uh yeah, uh Amel and the Sniffers, Australian oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. band. They're really cool. Um I've been listening to them. I listened to uh, the new Watain or the latest Watain. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. Um, uh, Devil Master. I love their uh, last album from last year. Um, what else? Yeah, loads, loads of like kind of uh, old stuff recently, like the Beatles, the Doors, um, that kind of stuff. Um, just try to think what's on like my actual playlist. Um, mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, that kind of stuff in a, a Swedish band called Sarkater, a really cool kind of extreme thrash. Um, loads of Annihilator again. Um, yeah, probably, yeah. Usually uh, I listen to music when I'm like going to the post office or going on a walk or oh. packing orders or something. So I, I stick on like a, like a, a Spotify playlist or something and, you know, just all these stuff... Uh, come on so i'm just trying to think what, what's came up but yeah, yeah that's kind of the basics of it i guess no, that's cool uh, you mentioned the beatles here's a big question what's uh what's your favorite beatles album uh probably uh the best of the beatles what's your favorite beatles album a tough one i think i'd have to say the best of the beatles Partridge <laughs> reference yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i didn't know that would translate yeah, well yeah. to it no Australia. yeah no no so of course i know that one but yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, probably. I, I don't know. Maybe Rubber Rubber Soul. Maybe. Um, yeah. yeah. Overall, but the Beatles are like a band. I th- like all their albums have uh, all the good songs, and, and there's like eight hundred songs per album. So, <laughs> so it's like uh, there's a lot of stuff that I'm not too fond of included within like my favorite albums because there's just so much stuff there. Oh. So yeah, it's just a mixture of um, yeah, probably Rubber Soul overall. Maybe. Um, maybe Re- uh, revolver, maybe or white album. Any, yeah, it's difficult to choose. It's to be fair, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. Um, so I had a look. You got a lot of shows coming up this year all over the place. Um, like you know, Netherlands, Poland. Is there are any of those places? Uh, places you haven't played yet? Uh, yeah, Poland. We haven't been to, so this will be the first time there, which is cool. Um, we've got uh, some stuff in Czech Republic. Um. Again, haven't been there uh, before. Um, try to think what's been announced because we've got quite a lot of stuff that ha- uh, hasn't been announced or not fully confirmed yet. So, okay. yeah, we're heading to a lot of places for the first time and we'll be, yeah, again, returning to other places that we've played quite a few times. But, yeah, it's going to be um, quite a lot of uh, stuff going on on the live front. Like, um, this, uh, just, yeah, throughout this year, um we're going to be away like most of the summer and then throughout the throughout the year we're doing kind of weekends or one-off things in oh. europe and the uk we've got a few dates with warbringer in the uk which is oh. i'm looking forward to that oh. and then yeah probably into next year as well we're planning a tour early next year with a couple of my favorite bands so yeah i can't say anything about that because it's not confirmed or anything like i think it's still in the very early stages but yeah just seeing what happens man um and it's cool to visit these different places get the music out there and yeah. hopefully we'll hopefully we'll get over to australia at some point um yeah, we've been cool. it's kind of been in talks for a while but it's just availability and scheduling and getting everything aligned is just horrible so uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Awesome, man. Well, look, I hope you make it over. Um, thanks for your time, James. Be good. Good luck on the tour and everything. And uh, yeah, thanks links great. below. Check out the new album, everyone. So, thanks, thanks, man. Good time,